In this lesson we're going to use our knowledge of first and second derivatives to locate turning points and points of inflection of functions. When the second derivative is negative, the function is concave down. When the second derivative is positive, the function is concave up. And when the second derivative is equal to zero, then we have a point of inflection. So we're going to use this knowledge to locate firstly stationary points clearly showing use of calculus. What is expected here is that we differentiate the function so I'm just going to write it as y equals 2x plus 6x to the negative 1 and remember that a stationary point is any point on the function where the gradient is equal to 0 so find dy by dx to take 6 over x squared and at my stationary points, the gradient is 0. 2 takes 6 over x squared equals 0. And x is positive or negative root 3. So now I have the x values of my stationary points. I need to also work out the y values. So when x is positive root 3, y is 2 root 3 plus 6 over root 3 and when x is negative root 3 y is negative 2 root 3 take 6 over root 3 now 6 over root 3 6 root 3 over 3 or 2 root 3 as well so we can simplify these 2 root 3 plus 2 root 3 is 4 root 3 and negative 2 root 3 take 2 root 3 is negative 4 root 3. I'm also asked to describe the nature of the stationary points and for this I need the second derivative. So I take dy by dx and now I want the second derivative so that is 12x to the negative 3 which is 12 over x cubed. And I need to look at the value of the second derivative for each of these two x values. So when x is positive root 3, the second derivative is 12 over root 3 cubed. Now I don't need to work this out as a value, I just need to know if it's equal to less than or greater than 0. This is going to be positive. And when x is negative root 3, the second derivative will be 12 over negative root 3 cubed is negative. So what does that mean? Well, if the second derivative is negative, we have concave down. Second derivative positive, we have concave up. Second derivative positive, this is concave up. And for second derivative negative, concave down. Now if that's a stationary value, a concave up stationary value, so it's going to be a minimum turning point, and a concave down stationary value is a maximum turning point. In conclusion then, we have located two stationary points and we can describe their nature. So the first one is positive root 3, 4 root 3, and this is a minimum turning point. And secondly, we have negative root 3 and negative 4 root 3. And this one is a maximum turning point. In this second example, we're shown a screen capture from a class pad calculator. The function has been drawn y is x cubed take 12x squared plus 36x take 15 and there's a cursor which looks like it's a maximum turning point and we have the coordinates here of 217. So the question is asking is to confirm that the maximum turning point is indeed at 217. So we'll start with that function y equals x cubed take 12 x squared plus 36 x take 15 and differentiate. 
3x squared take 24x plus 36. Now if we're looking for turning points, this is where the gradient is equal to 0. So we need to solve that. 3x squared take 24x plus 36 equals 0. We can take out the common factor of 3 and then we can factorise and this results in two solutions, x equals 6 and x equals 2. So we definitely have a stationary value when x equals 2. Let's substitute in to check that we do get a y value of 17. So when x is 2, y is 2 cubed, take 12 lots of 2 squared, plus 36 times 2, take 15, yes it is 17. So we definitely have a stationary value at 217, but we haven't used any calculus yet to check if 217 is a maximum or a minimum. For that we will need to find the second derivative. d2y by dx squared is 6x take 24. Remember our two solutions for the first derivative being equal to 0 where x is 2 and x is 6. So let's check when x is 2, 6x take 24, that's going to be 12 take 24, that's going to be negative, which means concave down. So yes, it is a maximum turning point. And then the other stationary value is when x is 6. So this time 6x take 24, 36 take 24, that's positive. And so we have concave up and a minimum turning point. So we've used calculus to confirm that 217 is indeed a maximum turning point and we've located the only other stationary value which is a minimum turning point when x is 6 and all that remains is to find the y value that corresponds to an x value of 6. So 6 cubed take 12 lots of 6 squared plus 36 sixes take 15 36 is 6 squared, so 6 squared times 6 is 6 cubed. 12 is 2 times 6, so really this is 2 times 6 cubed. So we've got 6 cubed plus 6 cubed, take 2 lots of 6 cubed, all of this will cancel out, giving us a y value of negative 15. So our second stationary value is a minimum turning point at 6, negative 15. We're now able to sketch graphs of functions without the aid of a calculator using our knowledge of algebra and calculus. So when asked to sketch a graph it's important to include some key features. Firstly the y-axis intercept which occurs when x is equal to 0. So this is a case of substituting in a value of x into the function and in this case when x is 0 y is equal to 20. So our y-axis intercept is 0, 20. Secondly we look at the behaviour of the function as x approaches positive or negative infinity. Now our function here is a cubic function so the x cubed term will dominate which means that when x tends to infinity, y will also tend to infinity. And similarly, when x tends to negative infinity, y will also tend to negative infinity. Now we should already be aware of the shape of a cubic function with a positive coefficient of x cubed looks something like this. But we're now able to confirm a bit more about the function using calculus. So thirdly, 
we're looking for the location or nature of turning points. Now, we'll either have, with a cubic function, two turning points, or we might just have a point of inflection in the middle. So we need to do a bit more calculus to work out what sort of cubic function this is. So differentiating the function gives us 3x squared plus 6x, take 24. And if we're looking for turning points, we're looking for places when the gradient is zero. So we need to solve 3x squared plus 6x, take 24, equals zero. We'll factor out the 3 and factorise. Our two solutions are x equals negative 4 and x equals 2. So it looks like we've got this shape happening where we've got a maximum turning point when x is negative 4 and a minimum turning point when x is 2. To find the corresponding y values we need to substitute into the original equation. So when x is negative 4, y is negative 4 cubed, that's 3 times negative 4 squared, 24 lots of negative 4, plus 20, which is 100. And when x is 2, y is 2 cubed, plus 3 lots of 2 squared, so 24 lots of 2, plus 20, negative 8. So what we've established here is that we have two stationary values which are located at negative 4, 100 and 2, negative 8. And our knowledge of cubic functions would tell us that negative 4, 100 is a maximum turning point and 2, negative 8 is a minimum turning point. We're going to confirm this by looking at the second derivatives. d2y by dx squared is 6x plus 6 and when x is negative 4, 6x plus 6 is negative 24 plus 6 which is negative and when x is 2, 6x plus 6 is 12 plus 6, which is positive. So remember, if the second derivative is negative, that means we are concave down and we have a maximum turning point. And if the second derivative is positive, we're concave up and we have a minimum turning point. Finally, we're going to see if there are any points of inflection on this function. Points of inflection occur when the second derivative is equal to 0. So 6x plus 6 equals 0 and x is negative 1. Substitute into the function to find the y value. So y is negative 1 cubed. 3 lots of negative 1 squared. 24 times negative 1. 20, which is 46. So negative 1, 46 is our point inflection. Now we can sketch the graph of the function and include all of the key features. So we've plotted here the maximum turning point, the minimum turning point, the y-intercept and the point of inflection and it's going to be a cubic curve, so up, down, change concavity, through the y-intercept, minimum turning point, and up again. The final curve looks something like this, and as always with any graph, don't forget to label with the equation of the function.